Praise You, Lord is a Catholic Christian praise and worship radio ministry. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Zagaria. Please join us as we give praise, honor, and glory to our loving, awesome, and merciful God. He is loving and he is merciful. Welcome to Praise You, Lord, episode number 138. We're into our fourth year. Actually, technically, we've finished our fourth year. We're going into our fifth year. That's right. Absolutely incredible. It is. Uh, And this is episode number 138. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we have a very, very special program for you today. We're so excited Mm. to have Ken Soltes on the program, who we've been playing for four years now on our broadcast. Um, Ken, how are you doing? Ken, can you hear Ken's me? Ken's doing well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hear you fine. Good. Get, take the, <laughs> yeah, take the mute off. Yeah, right, I just got to hit the right button. You know, so. <laughs> so good to have yeah, you. I'm doing, I'm, oh, it's good to be here, and uh, I'm just honored. Thanks so Thanks so much. Oh, Appreciate that, it. Thank you. And and uh, for those who have been listening for four years, mm-hmm. since the beginning, Ken, Ken was one of the early contributors to our broadcast with his beautiful music. And uh, we play uh, Trumpet of the Lord and other songs. And at Christmas time, he was also part of our Jesus. We, we uh, For those who don't know, we our first and only <laughs> Praise You, Lord, record was, <laughs> <laughs> was uh, that we produced here in the studio is called A Jesus Christmas. And Ken was very, very mm-hmm. gracious to let us use some of his amazing yeah. uh, Chris, Christmas trumpet Christmas music. And some of that stuff hit the charts, right, man? Oh yeah, it, it, it was very surprising. Back, to, yeah, it did. It, it hit the, a lot of the internet and download charts. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah. I remember was, you was, telling me a story. Uh, something like it was in between Mariah Carey and I don't know. Well, I was uh, I was coming back from. Uh, it was I think it was uh, 2000, 2001. I was coming mm-hmm. back from Nairobi uh, and and. Kenya doing some uh, conferences there, and I was in. I was actually in London in the Gatwick Airport, and um, I said, "Well, let me check to see how this thing is doing on the old MP3.com." It was mm-hmm. really pre-digital uh, era music, but it was still uh, becoming very popular. Mm-hmm. And I pulled up, um, and uh, and I saw that the this, these royalties were doing really well on a daily basis, and I looked at the the world chart on mp3.com and i saw this the arrangement i did of jingle bells <laughs> and it was in between i i said I, I was in between madonna and faith hill and okay. it was like number three <laughs> and and That's then uh, and then uh, the old holy night was actually 17 or so on the billboard internet charts at that time and wow. and it was just um yeah and uh, it was uh, it was <laughs> i was quite uh I was quite touched by it. I was living in South Florida at that time too, and so down yeah, by so, us, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, oh yes, yeah, awesome. So. And uh, and we also just want to say hi to our co-host today, who we're always so happy to have in is Jackson yeah. Messick. How's it yeah, going, yeah, Jackson? Good, buddy. Thank you for having me as always. Yeah, it's so good to have you. <laughs> and Ken is uh, Ken. For those who don't know, Ken is a a phenomenal trumpeteer, mm-hmm. singer, songwriter, keyboard player. Is there anything you don't play, Ken? Yeah, good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I don't know when to turn the refrigerator off at night. Uh, with the, <laughs> yeah, <that's> this, <laughs> no, I I. I uh, You're um, a multi instrumentalist, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes, I, I am. But I uh, do you play a lot fr- of, frisbee? Maybe you don't play frisbee. Frisbee. I, no, <laughs> I, I don't play woodwind instrument, okay. but uh, many don't know. I, I have an identical twin brother named Keith, and he's a world class woodwind specialist. So wow. He was a uh, uh, he, his trained instrument, yeah, he went through the Juilliard, uh, uh, well, not Juilliard, Cleveland Institute of Music. Uh, and when I was doing the old R&B days uh-huh. in New York where I grew up, uh, my brother uh, was in an orchestra uh, that uh, he did a whole season at Carnegie Hall. So I remember wow. one evening being in the box seats and he was doing uh playing with that uh that was before he went uh and had residence in portugal for a year but uh and then we left there and i went down to the village and played with the r&b group i was playing with in the same night and uh it was uh, you know as young musicians you think that's 
you think that that was well that's pinnacle and uh, we got to play around a lot of well-known people yeah. or, uh, artists and different things but um the uh it still wasn't satisfying i mean it was cool but it there was always so much more to in mm. especially in the kingdom you know so Amen. anyway yeah i thought didn't even think about that stuff you know <laughs> yeah. yeah well so. you know what ken um uh I want to get into that history because we love testimony here. The, mm -hmm. the Bible reads that we, we will conquer by the blood of the Lamb, yeah. which is with, with the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, and the word of the our word. testimony. So yes, your testimony is really a powerful one. I'd, I'd love to get into that on this program. Um, yeah. Before we do that, however, can you blow the trumpet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have a I, I, i'll tell you something special um yeah. uh I, I have a trumpet i i was using the same trumpet literally for 40 years oh. i have several trumpets but the one and uh last november uh november i was in taiwan mm -hmm. and uh we were doing some ma major things with government and and the, and the apostolic network there uh and um, it was quite a lot of people. Uh, Taiwan is is really a Christian nation. It's really fabulous. And um, when um, when at the last meeting of the last day, I was in the southern city of Tainan, and uh, they uh, the Apostolic Network and some government leaders came to me, and uh, because of certain supernatural things that happened that I didn't know were taking place, which would take some time to explain it uh, the stories are so ma magnificent hmm. they uh they presented me with a a brand new silver trumpet whoa and wow. they and, and and so i have carried that and and I, this is uh right at the time before anything came up with a virus or anything in mm -hmm. in mainland china and so uh that's the trumpet well, i'll blow the trumpet but i want you to know that uh this is the trumpet that was presented to me by the nation wow and the exact make and model of this trumpet and the exact uh, features of it 30 years before that i was in homestead florida you know <laughs> i was at the <laughs> church and uh the pastor told me he said ken I, I i i got a strange prophetic word for you he said when when the trumpet when the silver trumpet is given to you, it's going to have certain markings on, on it, certain uh, certain characteristics. He says, when it's presented to you, you're to, at that point, decree that revival and awakening has come. And wow. so when they gave me the trumpet, I looked at it, I realized it was exactly that. And this is, you know, 30 years span. And so I said to, um, I, I, uh, I went in front and I took the microphone basically and the, understand it was a national platform and I told them what had happened 30 years earlier showed them the horn and at that point I didn't even put air into the horn and when I blew the trumpet into the nation and into that um, after decreeing that that this that this trumpet and the sound that I'm to change the words and these are all apostolic they kept saying Revival's coming, and I said, I'm to change your words and say, uh, it, awakening is here. We're being awakened right now. Didn't know that the coronavirus at that same time frame was being, was, was starting to happen. Wow. And that I believe this is causing an awakening. So <clears throat> I sounded, sounded the horn the next day um, after 30 meetings in about uh, 17 days. Uh, one of the pastors came up and said, the testimony you gave and the sound that you released and the, the awakening, it went viral through the country. Mm. And uh, and I said, wow, man. I said, well, wow. I, I mean, I, I said, it's just it's just a declaration. So um, I've kept the trumpet and I've I've kept playing the trumpet. And so when I release the sound now, I, I just want those that are listening to know that this horn came to me supernaturally, and it was a 30-year word that was fulfilled and then decreed. I thought I would just be standing in a place and say, okay, awakening is here, but I didn't know I'd be standing on a national platform and doing that. Mm. Wow. And so, anyway, I picked up the horn, and after I said, I said, awakening is here, revival is here, the words have changed, I, I picked up the horn, and I didn't even warm it up or anything, and I just began to play. So... And it 
was a powerful time, I'll tell you what. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, so we uh, uh, there's definite. Uh, it's not just about playing music or leading worship. It's literally bridging the gap between the heavens and the earth, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, dwelling in that heavenly realm that he said we've come to him and se- seated with him in heavenly places, mm-hmm. and being that. And uh, and someone says, well, what makes you so special? Nothing. Mm. Only the blood of Jesus and believing what he and knowing what he said is true, mm. that we've been crucified with him, raised with him, and and seated in heavenly places with him. Mm-hmm. And so when we come from that place and our faith starts to awaken to it, then we start we literally can literally see the the voice of the Lord, the hand of the Lord moving and so uh, and and walk in power and demonstration. So what I just did now for you, you know, Jeff and Jeff. Jackson, what I, and uh, what I just did now was basically exactly what went viral in, in Taiwan just this past November. Mm. And um, even today, I was supposed to be in Taiwan today. We delayed that trip, even though Taiwan is probably the safest nation on the earth because of the protocols they put in place against this virus. Mm-hmm. But we, we, they, they, we all agreed to just postpone it mm-hmm. uh, to, to another time. You know, and so, but still. The sound and my contacts with them and also several other nations continues. But that was a – when you asked to blow the trumpet and I looked at the trumpet and I said, well, I might as well tell you about the trumpet itself. And Great. so it marked a new – I have to tell you, it marked a new time and a new uh, shift in my life mm-hmm. uh, at that time too. And believe me, the Lord is shaking it up. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> awesome. 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 That's Great. I'm just going to, um, I want, for those who are just listening in, perhaps, you're listening to Praise You, Lord, the underground independent Catholic Christian radio broadcast brought to you once a week by the grace of God and by your prayer. So for those who are out there in the Praise You, Lord community, we thank you so much for your prayers. Mm-hmm. And because of your prayers and your charity of heart interceding for us uh, here at, and also the stations that play us, and that is the Catholic Radio Network, the 18 mega stations in Colorado, uh, out in Missouri, and in, 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 in the state of Kansas as well. And then down here, 98.3 FM, the Catholic Voice of the Palm Beaches, which is doing a fundraiser, and they definitely need our help. So please go to their website, wpbvradio.com, wpbvradio.com, and you can hit the donate button there if God is prompting you to do so. And then, of course, 100.1 FM in Stewart, Fort Pierce, Port St. Lucie. That's the Treasure Coast, Prince of Peace Catholic Radio. And the also the podcast listeners as mm-hmm. well. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so you. much for your prayers. This mm-hmm. is a volunteer ministry. We're trusting God that God is a provider. And we do know God blesses us when we come together and pray for one another and we're happy to be here. I know Jackson is. We're and uh, and to have such a great and wonderful uh, guest, Ken Soltes, who has incredible stories. I I have a feeling if God permits, we'll have him in on the broadcast. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, a lot more. I hope so. And uh, and such an interesting story uh, there. Ken, can we play on the radio? Have been for for the four years we've been doing this on Praise You Lord, and uh, we have a song called. Uh, trumpet of the Lord that, that we play a lot. His Christmas material we play as well at Christmas time, and and there's a few others. We're going to be showcasing some of his music and and getting some uh, getting some testimony and and uh, just conversation with Ken. So Ken, um, again, Ken. thanks for coming in, man. Thank you for for phoning oh, sure. for skyping in for to us there's today. Nothing nothing more I like talking about than the the kingdom of God and mm. and and giving testimony and and uh, attesting to the reality of the relationship we can have with the father mm. and with the son hey, amen. you know yeah amen mm. amen and uh and actually jackson we met ken uh years ago many years ago and you had said something very interesting i i sometimes i almost wish that we had like pre-broadcast uh footage yeah <laughs> um, i think that might have been we've had some awesome uh conversations before the show yeah, yeah. jackson yeah. comes in we come in about an hour earlier and we 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 fellowship yep. and, 
always. Yeah, you know, a lot of times, Ken, it's it's like you know, you come in and and uh, you just just need to get together with your brother, mm-hmm. your brothers and right. and sisters in, in some cases, and and uh, just have a few laughs. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hang out. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah that's and uh, and kind of just get ready for for uh, for for the broadcast in that way, as well as set up and get the mics prepped and do the do the sound checks and so on. So. And then uh, we we had a lot of laughs and some cool conversation. But just just a recap, Ken. Um, I met you. Uh, that, that's a long story. There's a long string of things, but it goes way back to when I I had cried out to the Lord. A lot of people know my testimony. In a desperate situation, I didn't cry out to Jesus. I cried out to the Father because at that time I I, I thank God I knew to cry out to the Father. I heard mm-hmm. His voice. And, right. um, and you know, uh, that's a long story, but it, that was the beginning of, of my new life, if you will. But it's mm-hmm. been a long transformational and informational process, step by step, day by day, heartbeat by heartbeat. Um, right. Yeah. And when I was reading the Bible, I was like, okay, I, this, either this is true or it's not. If it's not true, it couldn't come from, from the Father. Hmm. It couldn't. Mm-hmm. It's not, this book is not real if it's not from, and, you know, growing up Catholic, I um, I went to church pretty much every Sunday, c- did catechism, was mm-hmm. baptized as a child. I mean, you know, I had a relationship right. with the Lord as a child. It was wonderful. I, I'm so grateful for that upbringing that I had. Um, however, later later in my life, into my teens, I saw some things that didn't make sense to me. It confused me, and I, I, I had left the church for, for, for you know, several years. But um, in the process uh, of that, Ken, I basically... Um, uh, you know, went off and went to college when when I was out of church, out of the umbrella of the protection of the, of the faithful prayer. You know, I mean, I, I know people were praying for me, but I mm-hmm. I'd stepped out and uh, into the wild, crazy world, uh, and and uh, you know, found myself quite lost. So when I cried mm-hmm. out to the Father later, a few years later, I'm like, "Is this Bible real?" I asked this question, and I heard. I just heard this message on a radio broadcast called In Season and Out of Season. You happen to say right. that scripture. Well, that's actually how I ended up meeting you because that particular priest who was doing healing and deliverance in East Boston, I uh, went to see it and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm seeing healing. I'm seeing deliverance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess the Bible really, this is really happening. This yep. is when in the name of Jesus, people are healed. In the name of Jesus, people are delivered of evil spirits. You know, I, I was like, okay, now I see it. Yep. Yeah, that's it is real. Mm. And when I, once I got that answer, I said, okay, I can trust this Bible. And that was mm-hmm. a really important moment in my life. And, um, but, uh, but at any rate, that particular priest was down visiting who we call the crazy Cubans down in Miami. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the crazy Cubans were good friends with, <laughs> with pastor Larry, who's good friends with you. And, uh, and so, and then pastor Larry asked me to, to come and jam with you when, when, and, and put together a bands for some prophetic worship mm. down in Miami. This was right. many years ago and we did it several times. Jackson was part of that once or twice. Yeah, Jackson, right? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, uh, and so here we are and it's just amazing how God's the, the things intertwine and, and, and here yeah. we are, man. Now we're, you know, you're up in uh, the mountains of, uh, Appalachia. Yeah, <laughs> we're down here and we're down here in in, uh, in South Florida and uh, having conversation and, and catching up. And Jeff, so, can I can I say yes. something too? Yeah, you know, please, please. The sure. the times. All right, those nights, Ken. Those I think I think I got to I got to play with you maybe three times so far, and right. The it was huge for me, Ken. I think um, when I had met you, I think I'd only had. Um, you know, I think I had had an encounter with the Lord, uh, maybe maybe only a year before I had met you. So it was definitely, mm. you know, it was early on, really early on in my walk, and um, I had never ever seen worship like that ever, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's something that I would I would never forget. And I remember the Lord really really used it, Ken. Um, I've never gotten to say this yeah. to you, but I mean, He really used it in my life, uh, Ken, um, to wow. to teach yeah. me. You know, and to teach my Great. heart and to teach my soul about um, how to worship him. You know, it was such a mm-hmm. it was such a Holy Spirit filled um, and Holy Spirit educational moment for me. Um, and I'm I'm glad I get to tell you that now. You know, I haven't got to talk to you in Thank years, you. Um, but it's it's it really really taught me a lot. Um, 
and it was one, it, you know, it's just, it's cool in hindsight, right? When you see how the Lord, um, just puts you in certain situations where it's like that there's, there's something he really, right. really wanted to communicate with me. Right. It was one of those, it was one of those really important, um, turning points for me, honestly, um, Amen. into what, into what worship could be right into, into what, um, what, what praise that halal praise. I remember you, you actually gave a teaching on right. that that night, right? What it, what it, right. what that's like, you know? Um, yes. and it, it, it stuck, it stuck with me, Ken, you know, it was, it was, uh, I'm really grateful to the Lord to have had that, that, that time with you and, um, and, and Jeff and, um, that the Lord, uh, it just really made himself present to me and really taught me, um, a lot about how, how to, how to, how to uh, approach him in that way and also help lead people, right. Help bring people into, mm. um, to, to that time to, 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 that they can have with the Lord, um, that they can have, um, that really personal, um, encounter themselves with the Lord and really set, um, set up a, a framework that they can do that in. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really grateful for that, Ken. So I, I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jack, I appreciate that Jackson. Um, it's always an honor when I get to share and be, and because it's not just me sharing, uh, it's, you too sharing back so it's an honor for me mm-hmm. also you know it's huge also um Praise the lord you know people have asked about what what is it that it is you know you do and i i mean there's teachings at the teachings and and like what uh peter said at the day of pentecost this is that that the prophet joel talked about and that's really how i explain things but the bottom line is uh worship has been a um a thing that I've noticed uh, uh, over the years, it's been about the song, mm. and hopefully the song is good, or about the worship leader. And when I go back to it, the song always came from, like, when you read the Psalms and, and David and the Psalms of Songs, it always came from, it, it, it came from the place he was at. Hmm. So it was before the Lord, you'd look at the Lord, and it would just pour out of him. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I began to see that worship is not about the, the programmatic music, it's about the place you're at. But then from that place, those songs flow. And now we have mm-hmm. technologies to sonically make it well. So, and in that too, when, um, you know, when we talk about worship leading, um, I have, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit of the gospel of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. But see, in the kingdom of God, I couldn't find a worship leader, even in the tabernacle of David. The only one I could find was Lucifer. And he messed up, you know, he took a little bit of the glory. But mm. what I did find were chief musicians, many of them. And so when I looked at uh, the scripture and the order that the, that the chief musicians, their, their, their job was not to lead the people in worship. Their job was to bless the Lord continually. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. when you come and you're standing in that place, I mean, let me just face it, if you're standing in the throne room of God, you're not turning around leading people in worship. Your your focus is on him blessing him. Yeah. Right. And then at and what would happen is is as the when the because the, the people would have should come to the courts with pra- you know, to the gate courts with praise, the gates mm-hmm. with thanksgiving. I always get that background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gates yeah. with praise, <laughs> the courts with thanksgiving. Yeah. So they should be coming in already blessing the Lord. The chief musicians their role is to accompany that. So even when you mm-hmm. look at the words of praise, music didn't lead it. It accompanied that that expression. And so I just put my eyes on the Lord. I begin to just bless the Lord. And, you know, we begin to, you know, if you're with musicians that, or even people that dance or flags or banners, they just sure. begin to play the motion because it's blessing the Lord face to face. And oftentimes songs come out of that. And yeah. I, I you know, um, we do sing, you know, there's a scripture, I think it's Hezekiah he, or one of the kings that requested, well, sing the new, sing the songs of David, but also sing the new song. So mm-hmm. we do sing songs, but when yeah. we're focused on, on that, uh, we're, we're now in that heavenly realm, that heavenly place, because we're seated in heavenly places. And when we're in that place and our, we begin to just bless him and, and and accompany the people that are it just causes people to focus put their their eyes on him yeah. and and not on an anointing or how good is the worship at this place or that <laughs> yeah. man I, i'm going to be honest with you i i did a we had a um a hundred days where I was supposed to go someplace for three days and just release the sound and bless the Lord. I mean, just let it pour out. Mm. 
And it was in Columbia, South Carolina in uh, 04. And as a matter of fact, uh, one of those places, one, one of the guys involved was uh, Pastor Randy Leshner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. And yep. so in Covenant Ministries. But we were up in Columbia. Mm-hmm. And what was supposed to be two, day, two to three days ended up being 100 before we took a break of every day just releasing, uh, you know, just releasing. And then uh, in that, I mean, we had tremendous equipment tremendous things and it was it was just the miraculous things were happening and we we could feel the heavens shaking and breaking through and um and that was before people talked about uh free flow prophetic music and we were breaking through that uh we were already operating in that and so uh, at that point i had to break because i had uh scheduled dates with uh some of the networkers in in uh, in Europe, uh, we were doing conferences in Ecuador and Peru and Colombia, and so in South America. So I left. I when I left that date, I went down into uh, uh, L- Lima, Peru, and when I was there, I uh, <laughs> I started to just to teach, and I started to, was going to just release this, you know, just begin to bless the Lord and have their eyes focused on Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. and and just re- at least that revelation but here's what we had we had um a drum set that had a broken cymbal and a, and a drum and a, the bass drum that the head was broken on it <laughs> i we had two <laughs> old casios that had no pedal to it and i had a trumpet and when the sound of that lord when god goes up with the shout the lord with the sound of the trumpet that's psalm 47 we, we don't sing about it it's an instruction of what you do when that sound went up it was the same sound as if i just walked out of high tech situations yeah. mm. and i realized my gosh it's the same place yeah mm. and so yeah. you know so what we experience what we carry is literally the the truth of the identity and the, of the location of where we're at and it is true even Hebrews says the writer of Hebrews in twelve, chapter twelve twenty two says, "We don't you know you've come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem in the in the company of innumerable angels," and and mm-hmm. Ephesians says that you're you're seated with him in heavenly places. Well, I dare to think that when we begin to bless the Lord face to face, that we're actually there. Yep, mm-hmm. you know, and that's and then that's that's where the, that's where all that starts to happen. So yeah, thanks, awesome. Jackson, for you know you triggered something off of me. Yeah, well, I get very excited about that. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, and thank you, Ken, because I think that's that's an important clarification. You know that um, that we're called to bless the Lord continually. We're called to yes, right, and that's and that's the heart of it. And I think that's an, an important reminder for for people that the Lord is called to to music ministry, right, and and that that u- unique kind of um, that it's it's a unique kind of ministry, but that's that's so important. That's so important, well, Ken, to remember. That's that's he, yeah. The the call is it just a, as a uh, to bless him and, continually. By, keep your eyes no on means, him. Yeah, I know. I've had some people, uh, you know, say, "Are oh, you saying we don't need no worship leaders?" You're saying they're wrong. And I say, "No, I didn't say that. I said I just couldn't find it." Mm. Mm-hmm. And so that's it. I am. I have no judgment or no right or wrong. I I don't think religiously like that. I just start blessing the Lord. Yeah, and yeah. in that. If you just start blessing the Lord, it's going to cause usually, uh, like Jackson, you were talking. I was just mm-hmm. blessing the Lord, and so you start blessing the Lord. Yep. And yep. and that's you know, we don't lead by trying to drag people in. We lead mm-hmm. by just blessing Him and lifting Him up. And He said, "This is this is the premise for this. If I be lifted up, I will draw men." So okay, Lord, I'm going to bless you, and you draw the men. Amen. Yeah, I confirm a- that. And it's a supernatural relationship. That's what yep. begins to happen. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I could go on actually for hours on any one of these things Uh, that's that's great ken (laughs) yeah that really is that is beautiful well if Uh, you're if you're if you're out there listening uh just to let you know you might have just dialed in on your radio and you're listening to praise you lord episode number 138 we are the underground independent catholic christian radio broadcast brought to you once a week by the grace of god and by the power of your prayer Mm -hmm. so thank you Praise you, Lord, community, for praying for us. We we are yes. so grateful for that. And this is the uh, this is the March. Let's see, we're on the weekend of March fourteenth and fifteenth mm-hmm. of two thousand twenty. Just to date stamp our program. So if you're listening in currently right now, we're we're in an unusual t- time period. We're dealing with uh, a a virus that mm-hmm. has um, been spreading throughout throughout the world. Now, uh, Ken, you um, 
you spend a lot of time in Asia. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I have in the Far East, yes. Yeah, in the Far East. And uh, and, well, you travel quite a bit just about everywhere, it sounds like. Um, Is there anywhere you don't go? (laughs) Uh, Antarctica. Have you blown your trumpet on Antarctica? No, that's on my, uh, as people call it's it, a bucket, a bucket list. list. Bucket yeah. list. Someone says, what, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to take a cruise to Antarctica. Uh, now, this is going to sound crazy, but during all those, when we were tracking mm-hmm. how where places were downloading music and playing things, the, you know, this prophetic flow of release, it was downloaded quite a bit in Antarctica. And I don't, oh, I don't awesome. know. It, I think the I don't know these penguins were pretty you know savvy I guess I don't know <laughs> I know there's bases down there so yeah it's, it's I, awesome. th- th- I'd like to do that and I've never been uh, f- flown right over the coast I've never been in Australia though there's quite a few inv- you know considerations it's mm-hmm. I, I just go as uh, when everything falls together and yeah, there's the Lord yeah. <laughs> Amen to that Amen to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and uh, and gosh, uh, you said a lot of things that have got my mind thinking. Um, <laughs> one of them, you know, I'd like to kind of wrap up an idea though uh, in this okay. segment of our broadcast, and that is that you you're a, a wonderful trumpeteer, and mm-hmm. you've played with James Brown, and 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 who? Let's maybe you can give us a a little bit uh, a two minute background of of the people oh, you played man. with, and then. And then I, it would be so curious to go from that, um, and I know you're up in Nashville and so on, but to go from that and where did the where did you go from backing James Brown and others to playing backing Christian band, groups, famous ones up in Nashville? I think if I understand your story, and then and please you could just fill fill in, and then and then now just full time ministry, like what? How did that all happen? And what? Well, maybe you could <laughs> embellish on that a little uh, bit. It's kind of. I, I was p- part of groups that I yeah, with Jane. The <laughs> how do I say this? Uh, it is quite a quite a good story. But um, I just think I'd say from when I was a young kid, I started hearing certain sounds, and I saw when I was seven, I saw that I, I just wanted to go and watch the kids in the elementary school band play tr- trumpet, and I wanted to play trumpet. I knew there was a special call on that. Uh, had a lot of struggles uh, physically with, uh, you know, the mouth and teeth and different things and uh, overcame that. Uh, uh, but um, I started uh, really learning music and, and doing a lot of things with secular stuff and church stuff at the same time. I came to the Lord when I was 16, but I, my aspiration was to be a professional musician. And um, but uh there was a lot of blocking and hindrances to to that, even though I had some very good study. So some of the uh, things ended up, uh, some of the processes, when I went to school in Cleveland, Ohio, and did some study there, and then came back to New York in my young 20s, and in that I was playing with R&B uh, uh, R&B groups, and one in particular was called the Roman Parker Blues Band, which was an offshoot of old Wilson Pickett. And so, in doing that, uh, oftentimes uh, when we'd be in the village, we'd be mixing with some other well-known artists or their groups, and uh, then uh, or part of a group in a, uh, of another section or horn sections. And I'd be asked uh, like to do a show. And I got a chance to do a show where James. Brown was in the show on the show and that was pretty interesting and also the spinners and and so I, I had a chance to really touch those things and and taste and be involved in it and um uh but it's I have to be honest it is it, exciting it sounded I was never I just always felt I was in uh, the environment was a little I, I wasn't always happy with the environment but I was happy to play mm. and i believe that you know even then i was doing uh, up in new york weddings and bar mitzvahs were you know were very popular so you and, and paid very well so i was part of groups and bands there and actually got to work with award winners even one became a dove award winner uh in christian music and uh it was really a, a so i you know i'm touching on a few things it was kind of a progression and, and so i learned music and and technique and different things I grabbed everything I could get hold of and incorporated it so in that so that uh, when but my personal expression deep down always was I'm going to serve you and I am serving you but those years were the years that I actually got trained and Mm -hmm. so 
that's where I got schooled, if you can say. And sure. not just in trumpet and music, but in life itself. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I started doing, I did a lot of shows off, -broad I did some off Broadway stuff and things like that. And um, But I kept thinking, no, my calling's to, to something special. And that word was over me since I was 16, but I, I didn't quite understand it and the things that the Lord was showing me even in the midst of those years I didn't know who to process that with right. so it took some years for it to start coming together mm. and and in Nashville I got a uh, uh, well in, before I moved to Nashville I was warming up artists um, in concerts at the, at the church I was serving on staff so I'd warm up a concert I, I, I mean the, these are Twilight Paris, I don't know if you remember these, Scott sure. Wesley Brown, Michael oh, yeah. Card, these these types. And so all the Christian artists, I was warming them up when they would come to our area in, in, North, in North, uh, North Shore of Long Island. And when I went to Nashville, <coughs> that's where I got introduced to actually more country artists. And, uh, and so there, uh, what I really, I, I've had so many beautiful stories with some of these guys. It wasn't so much the music, it was the... Uh, it was their life, and a lot of them just had wonderful, beautiful Christian. They were Christians, you know, mm -hmm. many of them. Yeah, sure. And uh, but then when I went to Florida, uh, you know, I did serve at churches, but I spent two years with Wayne Cochran, and um, and that uh, actually in the music world, because I was his music director, even though I was on the, you know the staff with the music and his church there in. Uh, it was on a uh, right up Red Road, North, you know, one sixty seventh Street up there, and um, sure. When I, um, but that with my friends in the music industry from Nashville, now California, and all this stuff, they thought that was the top bomb because the you know uh, he was uh, they just he was so innovative. So it, mm. it was, and I learned a lot about the kingdom from Pastor Wayne, and uh, uh, so I've been real fortunate. So all those worlds came together into one point, and and now I feel like it's focused you know, unto the Lord. So I hope Interesting. I did it. I, I tried to cover it all. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, uh, that was, that was really good. Good synopsis there. And oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, okay. So, well, if you're listening in, listening in, you're listening to praise you Lord, the Catholic Christian independent radio broadcast. And when I say independent, I mean, independent, <laughs> we are not funded by anybody. Yep. And we get no funding from the Catholic Church. We are just, uh, we were asked to do this by independent radio station, 98.3 FM, the Catholic Voice of the Palm Beaches, who, by the way, in their independence, they always need some help. They mm -hmm. We run a really low budget up there, um, meaning that no one gets paid. Uh, so if it's in your heart and you're being blessed by this, you might want to consider blessing that station. That's mm -hmm. where we got our start. And then this program was picked up by the station up in uh, Fort Pierce, uh, Stewart, and um, that area, the Treasure Coast, that's 100.1 FM, and now Catholic Radio Network, the syndicated network up in Kansas, Missouri, and Colorado. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers. We need them so much. For uh, all the listeners out there on the podcast, thank you, thank you. We're so grateful to have Ken Soltes in on our broadcast and Ken, I'd like to uh, perhaps play your song, Trumpet of the Lord. We play that here and have been for four years. So it's great to finally have you on the program. Uh, <laughs> the actual person who composed this and, and, and performed mm -hmm. this, this uh, song. Maybe you can give us a little background. We play it a lot, but maybe, maybe you can give us some background on what you're thinking or any tidbits about the, about the song before we play it. Uh, well, <laughs> when I began to, as I got closer to the Lord and, and understanding more of the calling, I would see that when God, when the Lord spoke, I'll give an example in Revelation chapter four, verse one. They would hear the sound. He, John and the island of Patmos heard the sound, heard a voice, and it was like that of a trumpet. Mm -hmm. And as you read it, it really was a trumpet, and he understood it. So whenever the trumpet of the Lord was sounding, he was speaking, proclaiming, declaring, and and usually it would mean uh, uh, a call. It could be a call to arms. It depended on the call. But the trumpet of the Lord, when it's sounding, causes you to awake and come into attention of what he's requesting. And when John heard that sound, when he heard that voice like that of a trumpet, it was saying, come up here. There's more I have to show you. So, uh, mm -hmm. and, and 
and his voice, uh, everything's created by his word. And uh, I don't want to get into the word light and what it means, the voice, but he's, uh, when, the, when he sounds, things are created. Yeah. And, and, and it's amazing how he created us in that image, mm. in, his, in, in him. Mm. So created in his image. So anyway, it's a call to, to hear the voice of the Lord, to stand face to face with him, to bless him, and knowing that that sound of his voice is, uh, causes the earth. To, to, it causes the earth to shake, causes us to respond to him, and it actually brings assurance that he really is almighty. Amen. So that's a, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, well, folks, here it is. Trumpet of the Lord by Ken Soltes, and that was such a great uh, uh, explanation of the song. Here it is. Trumpet of the Lord. <laughs> trembles at the sound of your name but when it's sounding it establishes domain it's a sound from heaven over every nation it's a trumpet sounding to every generation it declares a kingdom in all authority it demands all nations of your crown It's a voice from heaven that declares your holy name With all authority Heaven and earth the same It calls the nations to embrace their destiny To open up wide your gate to the mind
Trumpet of the Lord by Ken Soltis, who's here in the studio through Skype with us. I love that song, yeah, Ken. That's great. Uh, man, I'll tell you, that Trump is particularly, particularly the improvisational kind of Holy Spirit inspired, <laughs> the way I hear it, um, kind of last minute or two. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's awesome. Gosh, that's really inspiring trumpet playing. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, we love that song here. Thanks. Uh, Ken, I, I, there's, we're, it's unbelievable how quickly this program's going. Jackson was like looking yeah, at, at the, uh, looking at our, <laughs> looking at our, you know, the time yes. that's left. And, uh, and he even suggested, he said, you, you know, would you think of pre-recording, you know, something after this with, with Ken? And, um, I don't really feel led to do that. I don't have the time. Um, and I just don't feel it. However, what I'd like to do is get into a subject that we, you and I have been going back and forth on a lot in the recent weeks uh and that is music light sound frequency vibration and things of that nature and uh and i'd like to just kind of open that discussion up a little bit and then perhaps if god wants and if we're we can all you know find time to in the lord ordains that we could get together and maybe speak more on this mm -hmm. subject but um you have a really awesome recording here that i have uh called healing and it's um, it's it, what's it says it's tuned at 428 hertz and uh, excuse me 480 428 hertz tuning 40 444.75. Um, tell us about tuning and and uh, maybe some uh, okay. some things on that uh, perhaps and 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 vibration. Uh, I mean, that's open floor. What, what do you uh, got? Was, what do you got, Ken? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Val, I'll, do, I'll do this real brief. Um, when we start dealing with light and, and sound and understanding, if you don't ground yourself in focusing on the Lord and His Word, it's gonna, it is going to. It is new agey. It will sound new agey. Mm. But the first thing that we have dominion in Him, and He has, He's given us medicines. He's given us a lot of things in these and technology. But one thing that He's saying these days is that he's you know that god is light and there's qualities at this at light that we could talk about and certain frequencies of sound that he's given us technologies in recent years we use sound you know you see sound we use sound in ultrasound you're actually looking mm -hmm. at sound when you're looking at a baby mm. you uh, you find the right frequency of a, of a kidney stone it'll shatter it right and that's mm -hmm. what we'll use that so we use these technologies already mm. and um and then in, in extensive studies, and uh, and that's what helps sometimes in the Far East uh, and in places that they're finding that uh, uh, certain technologies that the Lord has released through sound, which a sound is, without getting into the physics of it, is actually part of light, actually. it's That that would be something, that's a whole other subject. Uh, but uh, we're finding that certain frequencies frequencies have certain effects on on the human for instance you ever go into a place and and the sound is uh the, the you know you hear the sound bass you know these low bass or you may not hear it and you, you know the guy next to you all of a sudden he starts feeling upset a few people might have an upset stomach and but mm -hmm. you're fine well those are called like reverberating frequencies and uh we know that you find the right frequency of a crystal and you sing that note or hold a note toward that, you'll shatter it because the crystal is trying to vibrate at the same vibration. Mm -hmm. And so, and we find that that's the same thing that as we walk in the light, in other words, get in tune <laughs> in the light as he's in the light and have fellowship one another and love one another, then the blood of Jesus, it forgives. It cleanses us from all sin. Mm. So as we stand on that, and all the, you know, I could go through the scriptures, uh, Isaiah 60, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen. And we take it out of the spiritual mystical into the spiritual re reality that he really has given. He has given. We, uh, we're in him who has all power in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And so what he did is is that uh, just in the studies of music, how the 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 typical tuning of an orchestra like when a violinist comes out and plays the tuning note sure that's a that has a certain cycle to it they typically in north america it's uh 440 cycles or a and mm -hmm. uh so we've already we know that uh, but what we found that as research has gone through and i'd love to talk i could talk hours on this too is that um certain frequencies are having certain effects 
on the human body and actually seeing results. Uh, you know, and these are pretty over long periods of time. I wish I could quote the sources now, but I really can't. Sure. So uh, what I did is on so we've been doing in live gatherings now, and most of the stuff I do just cre- as you hear it, it's being created. This whole thing, this healing, it's it's as you hear it, it's being created. But as we bless the Lord, all they did is, uh, and this one we upped the tuning from four, four. I upped the tuning from 440 hertz for that note to 444 cycles, and someone goes, "Well, what does that make a difference?" Well, because the the pitch when uh, Jeff you mentioned it's actually 528 cycles. Yes. That 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 note which is kind of close to an A, you know, as we yeah. know it, higher. So that note um, played has actually been shown to start causing strands of DNA to repair itself, uh, it, equilibrium to go away, you know, or, or, or problems with equilibrium to stabilize a bit, and. Um, it actually kinds of stimulates a feeling of love, and they're finding this. They, you know, you know, with control groups, and you know, when I say about you know research, and it's uh, it's become more of a therapy now, uh, sound therapy, and that's why many have been buying certain sonic producers. Well, I get bored listening to a thing that goes, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, okay, so it's not bored, but I don't think we have to make that. The healer, because the Lord is the healer. All He's doing is releasing this. Yeah. So what He did is He took the we retuned and uh, uh, the you know the overall tuning, and then that note fits that five twenty eight note fits in really well, and then just began to bless the Lord. That's mm-hmm. awesome. And so you never take your eyes off of blessing the Lord. You're He's called you out of darkness. As a matter of fact, you're a royal priesthood, a king priest, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation. A peculiar people set apart to show forth the praises of him who's called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. And that's First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Mm-hmm. So the, this this track, it was just to, to bless the Lord and to be in that place. And I, I really could sense that as I was blessing him, he wants to heal. And, I, and here's what I'm going to say. I am not saying... And the music heals, the frequency heals. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the healer. That's right. But he's releasing so much that we're actually bridging the gap between uh, eliminating more of the mystical and bringing it into the real. Hmm. And someone says, well, that's not faith anymore. Well, uh, let me ask, <laughs> how do you think we learned this stuff? How do you think we're le- Because we're recognizing the voice of the Lord and he's giving us things. Sure. You know, Jesus, Jesus was instructed uh, oftentimes where to go to get where to, to the rest where to get food, where, you know, heck, even how to pay taxes, go down. He was giving directions and information. Yep, that's true. And so that's what this is. But And really, it's meant to just be in the background. We bless the Lord and and let him, he he heals. He he really does. So I I don't, more is caught than taught, to tell you the truth in this. So Mm, Okay. (laughs) That was great. We're going to play this song. Uh, I'd like to play about a minute of it and then back it off volume-wise and maybe speak a little more. We've got about four, yeah, you know, we only got about four minutes before uh, that's great. we need we get into the bumper music. So here's here's um, Healing is the name of this song by Ken Soltes. Um, and this is a different tuning. This is uh, 528 hertz, and it's uh, at... Uh, yeah, what is Atmosphere. it? A444.75. Yeah. Here we go. Right.
And we're listening to a song called Healing by Ken Soltes. Ken is Skyping in. I'm going to put this, pull us down behind our conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ken, that's absolutely beautiful. I really was touched by this music. Yeah. I play it in my truck, which I do a lot of listening <laughs> in my truck when I'm traveling around. And, um, man, we have a lot to converse, and I'd like to have more conversation perhaps on Praise yeah. You, Lord, with you. Um, I'm, I'm degreed in electrical engineering, as I think you know, and, and some of my right. listeners would know that. And I've been studying frequencies. Um, mm -hmm. I've been studying a lot about high frequencies, uh, 5G, that kind yeah. of stuff, and the effects on the mm -hmm. body. And also, of course, music is frequencies, and light is frequencies, as you sure. as you mentioned. So, um, But another, another thing I've noticed, Ken, is like I... Jackson would remember this. He helped me produce. He helped me in the production. I did this mm -hmm. production uh, call um, called "Father of Lights," and um, <laughs> you know, the idea was basically to pray and in, in, in the Holy Spirit and do play new songs with mm -hmm. uh, with my keyboard, meditative music, and actually it was produced through solar a, a solar power generator that I was working on mm -hmm. simultaneously. So all everything was like. Being run off a solar power generated. Uh, it was, anyways, <laughs> you know, it was kinda, fun. yeah, produced by the light right, right out, right off of my uh, back porch. But um, uh, coming from the sun, so yeah, that's so good. that's good. Yeah. So, anyways, but what I noticed is I, I handed it off to people that were really high level and even award winning um, produce. Uh, excuse me, mixing and mastering engineers. And every time it came back, it it, it came back wrong. And they're like, "Well, what's wrong with it?" I'm like, "I." Don't, Basically, it lost its anointing is the way that people sensitive to the spirit kind of expressed it. So just changing, you know, even getting, getting I, I think, Christian music into the hands of people that are not sensitive to the Holy Spirit can be, can actually, we can lose the, that special touch of God um, that happens when we, when, we, when we play music in the spirit. My gosh, the, the bumper music's playing right now, Ken, and here I am, I'm pontificating. Ken, thank you so much for 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 coming coming on the program. We got to get you on, hopefully as soon as possible. Definitely. You know, it, it just let you know if, if listeners want to know more. I, my webpage is a little outdated, but it has links to YouTube. What is the Facebook website? Because what is it? www.kensalties.com. God bless you That's, and your families, and most of all, praise you, Lord.